with no way up and I needed some help Everybody Breathing but not living Just existing Well, and I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus Will set you free
Grab your Bibles, grab your devices, grab whatever it is that you use, wherever you are today. If you're driving and listening, pull over on the side of the road or wait till you get home so you can really get a good uh, understanding and grasp of what we're saying. Or in the meanwhile, you want to listen while you're driving? God bless you. So, uh, there is a word that needs to be spoken, particularly in these times. I want to talk to you about some people who have done some things to you and you have not learned how to deal with them yet. I want to speak to you uh, from a particular passage of scripture that's very familiar, but if you hang with me, you're going to see some things that will help you to get through some things. But before we do, we're going to pray. You're going to ask that God will show up, that his anointing will flow wherever you are, and that your heart will be filled with his word and filled with encouragement. Amen? I'm here today because God has selected and appointed me and anointed me to do what I'm doing today for your, on your behalf. So let's, let's, let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for all that you have done, all that you're about to do. We just want to give you the glory. We want to give you the praise. If it had not been for your mercy, your grace, your kindness, if you hadn't been here, Lord, we wouldn't have made it as far as we have. Lord, we wouldn't have hope for tomorrow, but it's because of you that we have hope. It's because of you. We believe that tomorrow will be better than today. And we believe that our future is bright. Lord, we pray now that you help us to understand, hear, and to receive and grab the word which is able to save our souls. Lord, I pray that you quiet my spirit. Lord, help me to, to just hear your voice as you already preached this vessel through me, as you already speak this, spoke this message to me. I'm asking now that you use the Holy Spirit to use this vessel to your glory to reach those who are hearing right now. Lord, we thank you wherever they are, whatever condition they may be in. May after they hear this word, they be better for having heard what thus saith the Lord. Lord, we thank you. We bind every spirit in this place and not of you. I humble myself before you and your people. Have your way in me and through me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Today, as I said earlier, I want to deal with some folk who have been bothering you and you don't even know why. There's some folk on your job who wants to prevent you from moving forward because of some things about you they don't like. And these people I want to talk about, just to hasten to the point, I want to talk about your haters. You see, every now and then, you got to learn how to deal with your haters, particularly when your haters start tripping. See, that's what I want to talk to you today, today, today about. I want to talk to you today about when your haters, when haters start tripping. Yeah. First of all, let's define what a hater is. A hater is a person who actively and aggressively criticizes and disparages anyone or someone, anything or someone, a person who disapproves of something, a person who is jealous, a person who criticizes everything. Sure, you have some folk like that in your life. I'm certain you do. People who always have something to say about you, something to go ahead and throw some shade at you. They have something to put on Facebook about you. They won't make, they may not say it directly to you, but they, well, when you, when they get done talking, you know they're talking about you. Amen? And, and, and every now and then, because you're trying to live holy, because you're trying to be a Christian, because you're trying to live right, you, you don't understand why they keep coming at you. What did you do? Did you do something to deserve this? Did you say something that caused them to act the way they do? Sometimes people just hate because they hate. If they hear me, there's a, there's a website that's, that, that has 31 reasons why people hate you. I'm not going to go through the 31 reasons, but it's, one says, because the way you smile. They just don't like the way you smile. You have that spirit that said that that's exciting, that spirit that you always feel with joy. You have a type A personality, and they don't like that because it, it, it drives them crazy. There's another reason why they hate you. said because you put too much of your information online. You're always telling people what you're doing. They're always telling people what, what you have. They're always talking about how God blessed you. They don't want to hear it. That's the reason why they hate you. They don't hate, they hate because uh, they may be jealous of you. And when they start tripping, it means they start to lose it. They start to go off. They start to freak out. They start to go crazy. Why? Because they have something in them that dis dis dislikes you, and they have to let you know in one, one way or another how much they dislike you. And sometimes, it could be just that you're just doing what you're supposed to do. 
living your life and they find a reason to try to hurt you and put you out of their way. I want to talk to you from, from, from uh, the book of Daniel. We're going to go to the book of Daniel. And this man named Daniel is going to help us understand how to deal with your haters. Now, the chapter we're going to is chapter 6. So, so grab your devices, grab your Bible. We're going to chapter 6. And chapter 6 is a very familiar book, a very familiar passage. Daniel is a very familiar book. But in the, in the passage of Scripture uh, that, that we're talking about, this is when we find Daniel being placed in the lion's den. You know, you remember that, right? Daniel was placed in the lion's den, and, 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 and we celebrate the fact that these carnivorous beasts who were supposed to destroy Daniel, supposed to kill Daniel, did not because the Spirit of God came into the cave, came into the den where he was, and shut the mouth of the lion. We celebrate that because we realize there's times when people trying to tear us apart, when people want to tear us down, and, and we're in the midst of this, this, this cauldron of, of, of anger and, 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 and hate, and people trying to hurt you, want to pull you apart. But yet somehow God prevents them from doing that. They, they can't do what they want to do because the Spirit of God is on you, the Spirit of God is in you, and He prevents them from doing what they what they uh, that we were assigned to do. But, but but watch this now. The question is, what precipitated this? What got Daniel into the lion's den in the first place? See, we don't talk about how did he get how, why was he there? What did he do? To deserve, because the lion's den was meant to be his final place. The lion's den was meant to be his final, his final place where he, he, he had, you never would hear another word from him. His life was supposed to end there. And, and that's what some folk want to do. They want to destroy your character to the point where you can't move any further. That wherever they put you, that's where you end. Wherever the lion's den you end up in, that's where you're supposed to, that's where you're supposed to cease to, to, to exist. But Daniel kept on living and kept on moving, kept on breathing. Why? Because God was with him. And I want you to see why he ended up there in the first place. The reason why he ended up there in the first place is because his haters started tripping. Yeah. His haters started tripping. I want to see one verse. We're going to talk about the verses that precede that, but I want to look at the one verse that's going to help us understand how to deal with your haters when you start tripping. Amen? I'm not planning on being alone, but, but I, do, I do plan on being effective as long as the Spirit of God is speaking. Somebody say, speak, Lord. I, I can't do this without him, so I'm asking to speak, Lord. Here it is in verse 10 of chapter 6. Verse 10 of chapter 6. When your haters start tripping, Daniel helps us, uh, helps us to understand how to deal with them. Here it is. As we, excuse me, when he had heard or when he had learned that the document was signed, Daniel went into his house. And his windows were open, somebody say open, and in his upper room, he, he, towards Jerusalem, his windows were open in his upper room, toward Jerusalem, and he kneeled on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did before. How do you deal with your haters when they start trading? I'm glad you asked that question. What precipitated this? What got Daniel in the lion's den in the first place? What may Daniel have to go through this process that he's going to help us to go through to be able to understand how to handle when we have haters who are tricky? Well, Daniel was one of three leaders, chief leaders, in uh, the Persian media, media, Medes and Persian Empire. Under the directive of King Darius, he set up in uh, over 120 provinces he set up leaders in every area, and Daniel was one of three that was over those individuals. Now, if I can put it to you like this, Daniel would be the governor, and then the rest, the 120, would be uh, the leaders, the mayors in their communities. These were leaders who were supposed to go ahead and watch this, watch over the tax, watch over the, the, uh, the infrastructure, watch over the... The, the people there, make sure everything was going the way the, the king wanted, King Darius wanted. Well, there were, the, he had three co-equal leaders with him as that governor. He was, had three co-equal leaders, and these two, two of them realized something. He had such an excellent spirit, Daniel, had such an excellent spirit, that Darius wanted to raise him up above all of them. They were going to, he was going to make Daniel. I mean, he was going to make Daniel the third, the second man in charge. It would be Darius the king, and then Daniel. Well, they didn't like that. 
the, 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 the leaders didn't like the fact that this man who was, watch this now, a, one who was brought into captivity, brought out of, of Jerusalem, brought into captivity as a child, raised up under three administrations. He went through Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, and now he is here with Darius. He was raised up and he became so effective in his ministry, so effective in his calling, so effective in the way he carried himself that the, that the Bible says he had an excellent spirit because he was one superior in integrity, integrity, superior in character, and whatever he did, whatever he touched, God blessed. So Darius wanted that man to be over everybody else, but they had a problem. His haters revealed their true character when he began to, to, to become elevated. Understand something. Let me go down your road right now. Let me step into your house for a minute. Anytime you're about to move to another level, anytime the Lord starts to raise you up, understand your haters are going to start showing their true colors. They may have been your friends while you're with them. They may have walked with you, talked with you, went to church with you. They may have sat up to have drugs with you. But as soon as they find out you're about to get something more than they do, that's when you're going to find out who's really on your side. That's when you're going to find out whether they really care about you, whether they really, they're really glad for you. Because if you start I hear folks saying, how'd you get that? What makes you so special? What makes you so... They don't understand. When they start looking at you, they start looking at your relationship. You got a new relationship. You're walking with a new man, a new woman, and you're happy, you're smiling, and everything is going well. And they look at you. What makes you think you should have something like what? They don't understand what you went through the last three or four relationships. They don't understand how hard it was for you to just stay by yourself for the time that you did. They don't understand the story, the backstory behind what you went through and how to get where you are. And now God has opened up doors for you and he's blessing you and now your haters want to pull you back and push you down and keep you from progressing. They want to stop you from being able to watch this, to live your best life. Your haters, they show up when you start to move up. Amen, somebody. So, so, so here it is. They decided that we have to get this Daniel out of the way. Somebody better hear me. You, they had to get Daniel out of the way. Daniel was the person who was preventing them from getting what they want. They want to be able to watch this now. It's, it was surmised by some commentators that what, what, what they wanted to do was be able to control the inflow of the money so they can go ahead and use it to go ahead and watch this rip the king off. But watch this, Daniel was such a man of integrity, he wasn't going to let one dime, he was not going to let one drop, one thing, he was not going to let anything happen so that the king was going to get what he's supposed to and he was going to live the life he's supposed to. Everybody's going to be doing what they're supposed to do because they're going to have a watch over them and they didn't want that. They didn't want this foreigner. They didn't want this person who was brought in, who was dragged in, educated by them. Watch this. Got the clothes that he has on was because they gave him to him. The position he has because they put him in that position. David didn't ask for any of this. He was fine in Jerusalem. But yet, when they pulled him out, they took him and said, we need people who's going to be able to learn the language and become excellent in the king's court. And they're going to use him for the king's, for the king's purpose. Daniel rose along with the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They all rose to a higher level. And when that happened, all of a sudden, they start taking notice. The people around them start taking notice. The haters start taking notice. We got to do something about him. He's in our way. Who, whose way are you in? Is it the re could, could be that the reason why they want to pull you down because they see you as a problem. They see they see that you're supposed to, you're doing things that they're supposed to be doing. Like I remember Cain and Abel. Cain killed his brother Abel, and God said, "Wait a minute! If you do what your brother did, you would get what your brother got." But instead of doing what his brother did, he decided to take the, what he considered to be the problem out of the way. He killed his brother Abel because he didn't want to change his ways. Now some people don't want to change their ways, so they're going to keep doing what they're doing. And instead of them changing their ways and doing what you do to get what, they, get what you got, they want to try to move you out of the way. I hope you get that one. That was for free. Amen? So, here's what happened. If you will look at the third verse of the sixth chapter, it says that Daniel distinguished himself above the administrators and safe chapters. These are the leaders. Because he had an extraordinary spirit. I told you already, he had an extraordinary, in some cases, some of your Bible says excellent spirit. 
which means one is superior in character and behavior. So the king planned to put him over. I told you he'd send him over the whole realm. And the administrators in the same chapter, therefore, kept trying to find charge against Daniel regarding the kingdom. In other words, they were looking for ways to try to look for evidence to try to pull him down. They were looking for evidence to try to pull him, to watch this, to say, look at Daniel. Look, he is, he's not as holy as you think he is. He's not as kind as you think you think he is. He's not, as, he's not as perfect as you think he is. They look under every tree. They look under every leaf. They turn over every rock. They look at his finances. They look at his background. They look at his, 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 his keys. They look at everything that they can find. They try to make sure that this, they try to find something to, to pull this man down so they can use him against him. They're looking for some evidence. They're looking for evidence. We need evidence to take to the king to prevent him from using him and place him above us. But here's what the Bible says. But no charge of, of corruption or corruption was found. Why? Because he was trustworthy and no negligence or corruption was found in him. That he did what was right because he lived right because he was right. He had a relationship with God that compelled him to walk right. A relationship with God that compelled him to live right. They could find no evidence. Somebody say evidence. You see, you see, the question though is, if, if someone wants to look at your life, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm just gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna be straight up, okay? I'm not going uh, y'all know me by now. If they look at me good enough, they're gonna find some evidence. They're gonna find some stuff. The Bible says clearly that we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. You're going to find some evidence if you look at me through the, watch this, through the lens of my past and through the lens of my mistakes. You're going to find some evidence. However, you're not looking through the right lens. You ever hear what I'm saying? The lens that they need to start looking through is the one that happened on Golgotha's Hill. They need to look through the lens of the, of the one who placed his hands uh, uh, and feet were nailed to the cross. The one who allowed his blood to pro uh, flow profusely from his body. The one who justified me. The one who put me in a right place, a right standing with him. That says my sins were forgiven. And if you're born again, your sins are forgiven. So every time an enemy come looking to find evidence about you, if you look through the wrong lens, he's going to find some stuff. But when he look through the lens of Christ, through the blood of Jesus, the Bible going to let him know. And the, and the, and the, and the Spirit Uh oh, I'm about to mess up 
sudden now you're going to turn me off. No, keep it there, right there. Keep it right there. Don't turn it off yet. Don't, don't turn me off because it's because it's some, some good stuff coming. Is there evidence to, to accuse you of being a Christian? Is there enough evidence? Or do you hold grudges? You see, at that point, listen to me. At that point, God says, okay, I know what I've done for you, but do you realize what I've done for you? Do you realize you're supposed to give your life as a sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy and suffering unto God, which is your reasonable service? God wants us to live a sacrificial life. So every now and then, a sacrifice can turn around and talk about what somebody did to him, can turn around and talk about how, how things are so bad. A sacrifice is just a sacrifice. They give up everything for God. That includes your need to get back at the people who have been hurting you. Oh yeah, it's right here in the text. I want to give you four things that aren't your way. How do you deal with your haters when they start tripping? The first thing you need to do, according to what I'm, what I'm learning from this, resist the need to get them back. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I feel it. I feel it through the camera. Listen, resist the need to get them back. I know, I know, I know what they said deserves you going and smacking them. I know, I know you, you still can employ these hands. I know you still have the ability to cuss folk out. I know you still have the ability to, to throw some shade at them as well. But, but, but watch this now. If you decide to take vengeance in your hands, God says, wait a minute. You're violating me. You're violating my word. I said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Understand something. God can get them back better than you can. What you need to do is pray for your, pray for your haters. Pray for those individuals who are like, matter of fact, we're going to look at that in a minute. But, but, but you need to learn how to resist. Resist. So I say, resist. Resist. Avoid the need. Push away the need to get them back. As much as they hurt you, I know. As much as they said about you, I know. But somebody got to act like they know who Jesus Christ is. Somebody got to go ahead and watch this. Give God glory for the sacrifice he made by living the life that he desires for us to live. I'm showing God glory and giving him praise by giving him the life he wants from me. And I'm showing him what we're going to walk in obedience to him because I'm resisting. Just like in Jesus, who, who, who when he was reviled, he reviled not back. Jesus did not go and say anything. He took the beating. He took the cross. He took the whipping. Why? Because he had a purpose. There was a purpose in his whipping. There was a purpose in him being nailed to the cross. There was a purpose in his blood being poured. There was a purpose in it. And the purpose was to deliver you and I from sin. What purpose is God using the situation in your life right now to get you to help somebody else? Somebody else is going to need your witness. Somebody else is going to need to know that you're able to stay in through fire and not Daniel's habits. 
We know his habits. We're going to see him in a minute. We know his habits. So we got him now. If we bring any other guy, we got him. We're going to put him in a den. What got him in the lion's den? Because he had a habit of doing what God called him to do. Is he in the text? When he learned, he didn't, he didn't go back and say, hey, hold up, Darius, what's going on? I didn't have anything to do with this. Why did you, why did you sign this? These guys are trying to get me. Can't you understand? These people want to put me out of the way. I'm the boy. I'm the, I'm the one who got your back, Darius. No, he didn't go back to the king and start pleading his case. What he did was, he just went on up into his house after he knew what had been written. The Bible says he went to his house. He didn't complain. He was cool, calm, and collective. He just went on about his business and did what he's normally done. The Bible says that he went into his upper room and his windows were open in his upper room. I, listen, that gives me some, that, that helps me understand something when I have to overcome the haters. If I stay down here, I will end up acting like them. I will end up trying to get them back for what they done. If I stay down here. But I'm reminded what, what first lady, the last first lady of our, of our country, uh, Michelle Obama, I remember what she said. When they go low, we go high. When they go low, we go high. He went up into this upper room. When you when, 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 when every your enemies hating and they're trying to tear you apart and start tripping, you need to go into your upper room. Change your attitude to change your attitude. Change your attitude to change your attitude. Your attitude will stay on the low level and you want to engage and get back at them if you stay where they are. But when you go into your upper room, yes, I reminded the upper room, the upper room. I reminded of when Jesus had left and he told the disciples to tarry ye here in Jerusalem and wait until the power of the Holy Spirit come upon you. It was in Acts chapter 2 when they went up into the upper room. And as they were all together on one accord and they were praying, the Bible says that Wind. And there were growing tongues of fire and light upon all of them. And he filled them all in the room. Why were they filled? Because they were in there together. They were in there praying together. They were in on one accord together. And they began to speak in languages they never, they didn't have to go to school for. They were able to watch this, to, to translate the word of God so others would hear what God is saying. And they didn't have to go to any seminary. They didn't have to go to any linguistic class. They, 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 they learned. fresh fire today. We need a fresh wind today. We need a fresh anointing today from God. With all the crazy stuff going on in the world and all the stuff that's happening in your life, what you need when your haters come, you need a fresh wind, a fresh fire. So you need to go into your upper room. Change your attitude, change your altitude to change your attitude. When they go low, you go high. It's here in the text. Then notice what he did. First, he resisted. Second, he raised up above. He raised his altitude to change his attitude. But then he was, watch this, persistent in his prayer life. It's right here. It says he went, his window was open. Oh, wait a minute. Let me stop there for a minute. The window was open. Now, Daniel knew that anybody who was found praying to any other god other than Darius that he, watch this, that person was going to go into the lion's den. Well, Daniel went, kneeled down in front of an open window so that everybody could see. Yeah, I know, I know. Some of us would have said, well, if I'm going to pray, I'm going to at least close my window. I right, think I'm not going to let them put me in no lion's den. We may have went back in our room and got into our classic space and shut down a we maybe we would have changed the timing because he went morning and noon and night. Maybe we would start to flip the timing and not pray at the same time so they can't they can't catch me in what I'm doing. We certainly wouldn't put it out there. But listen to me now. The Bible tells us that Christians ought to be bold. In Proverbs 28 and 1, the Bible says that the wicked flee when no man pursues. But the righteous are bold as lions. We need bold Christians today. In the midst of all the crazy stuff we're going on, Jesus Christ is who we stand for. Jesus Christ is who we 
walk with. Jesus Christ is who we represent. I don't care what you think about me, how you feel about me, how you hate on me. Because I know where my help comes from. I know where my strength comes from. I know I would be dead in a grave somewhere if it wasn't for the Lord. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But you need to be bold enough to fight a good fight of faith. You can't sit back and be merely not the weak back and scared of what somebody else might say. Well, what? 
love for God. He was consistent. He didn't allow the circumstances in his life and the haters to change him. Oh, my brother, my sister, don't you understand that's what the enemy is trying to do to you? He's trying to get you to change, to stop worshiping, stop coming to church. Since this pandemic, a lot of folks just stopped showing up. I'm thankful we got people returning, but you haven't yet. Why? Why change because of a pandemic? You've been here. God's been has kept you. So it's time for you to get back on the wall. It's time for you to get back to service. It's time for you to get back to do what God called you to do. You have a purpose. You have value. And God says, don't you let that push, don't let the enemy push that aside. Think more about what I think about you rather than what they think about you. And stop having them tools to try to pull you down. Your words matter when you say you can't, when you say you won't, when you say I hurt. You say it'll never get any better. When you say these things, the devil uses them against you. But start talking about how great your God is. Start talking about how good he is. Start talking about how good he's been to you. Start talking about his grace and his mercy. Start talking about what he's able to do. Start talking about the future being bright. Start talking about life and death is in the power of the tongue. God wants you to start speaking life into your own situation. The haters are speaking death. They want you in that mind's den. But you, you, I'm talking, yes, I'm talking to you. Start speaking life. Do what Daniel did. Resist the need. Raise your altitude to change your attitude. Be persistent in your prayer life. And finally, be consistent in your walk with God. Do what you did that got you noticed by the enemy. And watch God turn situations around. Daniel didn't die in the lion's den because God was faithful to him. And he'll be faithful to you. So God bless you. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. We appreciate you. Remember that we're here in both in both, uh, both locations, Port Norris and Vinus. Vinus at 930 and here at Port Norris at 1130. Come on out. Worship with us. Spend some time with us. Amen. And whenever you see this, video. Know this, that God has selected you for a purpose. He has a plan. And of course the enemy's coming. But don't you trip because your enemies or your haters start tripping. God bless you. God bless you. Take it to him and leave it there. I was down but with a no way up and I needed some help. Everybody Breathing but not living Just existing Well, and I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus Will set you free 